Welcome to the third tutorial of this series about the Travel Time Platform plugin for QGIS. Today, we'll cover a more advanced use of QGIS with the Travel Time Platform plugin. We'll cover how to make and run processing models and how to run algorithms in batch. Make sure you follow the two previous tutorials before watching this one, as we'll reuse a lot of the skills that we learnt before. In this tutorial, we're going to continue our scenario about the pizzeria business. We'll verify whether now that our business has grown, it is still appropriate to do the deliveries by bicycle or whether we should switch to car. To do so, we'll try to map all the areas that are reachable by bicycle but not by car and all the areas that are reachable by car but not by bicycle. This will then allow us to compare the two transportation modes quite effectively. To do these analysis, we'll build a processing model. So go to the processing toolbox at the very top here. Choose Create a new model. This opens the QGIS Processing Modeler the QGIS Processing Modeler is a very powerful tool which allows you to use algorithms from the processing toolbox as building blocks to create some more or less complex workflows that you can use like a regular algorithm. We'll get started by giving our model a name. We'll call it Bike versus Car. And the group is Pizza On Time Incorporated. We'll then define the inputs of the algorithm. In our case, it will just be a vector layer that we will call restaurants. And we'll give it the type point as the algorithm will only work with points. Okay, switch back to the algorithms tab and now we're going to add the time map simple algorithm. So first, drag and drop it here on the model and we'll call this one Reachable by Byte. Make sure here in the searches it uses the restaurant input that we just added before. Make sure also that the transportation type is cycling. And if this is all alright, click OK. If you remember the last tutorial of the series, you know what the next step is. We need to add the dissolve step to merge all the polygons returned by this algorithm into one. So, go to the Algorithm tab and search for the Dissolve algorithm and then drag and drop it here. We'll call it Reachable by Bike Dissolved and make sure that the input layer is the output layer from the first reachable by bike. OK, once we're set, we would do exactly the same thing but by car. So, we go back to the travel time platform algorithm, add the time map simple, and we'll call it reachable by car. Transportation type. We'll change this to driving. OK. And we'll add the dissolves tab. Call it reachable by car dissolved. And make sure to pick the correct one, the output from reachable car. It's quite important to give it a clear description because if you don't, it's very hard afterwards to pick the correct layer and algorithms. OK, the next step we're going to add is a step that takes the difference between this result and this result so that you get the area reachable by bike and removes the area that is also reachable by car to keep only the area that is reachable by bike. So, we'll look for the difference algorithm and drag and drop it here. We'll call this reachable by bike only. As input, we'll take the dissolved reachable by bike, dissolved, and as overlay, the dissolved reachable by car, dissolved. And this time, we're going to enter a name here in the result. Because this will be one of the final results of our work, I will also call it 
reachable by bike only. Okay. And now we'll do exactly the same thing to get the area that is reachable by car only. So we'll take the difference here and call it reachable by car only. As input, we'll do the opposite. So we'll take the reachable by car dissolved and we'll overlay the reachable by bike dissolved and we'll call it reachable by car only. Okay, so that's your final algorithm. Make sure you save it. You can save it here in the project so that it's linked to your QGIS projects or you can also save it here globally so that it will be available in all your projects. I'm going to do it here. So it tells me it's saved and I'll close this processing window. And now if you look at the processing toolbox, if you close everything, we'll see here and you click project models that appear and that lists your algorithm. So you're going to try it and it works exactly like any other algorithm. So you just double click on it and you choose your inputs. Remember we had just one input that was called my restaurants. So I'm going to select this and here I'm going to leave those by default because it will just tell us as a temporary layer. Run. So this runs all the algorithms that we prepared and then you can close. And now we have two layers. We have one layer that shows what's reachable by bike and another layer that shows what's only reachable by car. From this analysis, it seems that there is still a much bigger area that is reachable by bike than is reachable by car. So it seems our initial choice to make the deliveries by bike was a good one. So this is just a very quick example of what's doable with the processing modeler. There is much more that you can do. For instance, even use the algorithm provided by Quick OSM so that downloading the data would be part of the algorithm. Or you could use all the other algorithms that are provided either by QGIS itself or by extensions or the plugins. As our pizzeria has had more and more success, we need to expand the area of delivery so much that we can't really guarantee the 15 minutes delivery time anymore. So what we want to do is create an isochrome map that will show how long it takes for us to deliver a pizza in areas that are further away. So I'll just start by hiding some of the results. And just like we did in our previous tutorial, I'm going to take one point as an extract of those restaurants. I'm going to select one. I type Control C to copy it, and in the edit menu, I paste the features as a temporary scratch layer, and I'm going to call it Headquarter. OK, and I'm going to hide my restaurants. So now I go back to the processing toolbox, and I'll use the time map simple algorithm again, but instead of double clicking it, I'll right click on it and use the execute as batch process. This opens a window that looks a bit different than the normal dialog, but that has all the same inputs as having a normal dialog. It presents them as a table so that you can add more rows as needed to run the algorithm in batch. So I start by selecting the input layer. I'll choose from the different open layers and I tick Headquarter. Then I copy it on all the rows, I just double click on the header. Then you could change, for instance, the transportation type depending on your needs. Just for example, let's use public transport. I'll again double click here to copy that on all the rows and now we'll change the travel time. Since we're on an isochrome map, we want to do the same query but with different travel times. So I just put here 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90. And last step, I need to define an output layer. When you use the normal algorithm, you can just leave that empty and it will still load as a temporary layer. 
But using the batch processing dialog, you need to provide an output. And I save it to some place on my hard drive. I'm going to call it time map output. Save. I'm sure I can add a lot of autofill modes with numbers so that it automatically adds some different numbers onto each sheet. Don't forget to check that checkbox here, load layers on completion, so that you don't need to load those manually afterwards. Once you're done, you can hit run. And this is going to run all of your queries at once. When the task is completed, you can just close the window and look at the result. So this really shows a map showing all the areas that can be reachable by steps for 15 minutes by public transportation. The ability to run algorithms in batch is really powerful, especially if you combine it with the processing modeler that we saw before. This completes the last tutorial of the first series. Of course, there'll be a lot more to cover. We didn't look at, for instance, geocoding or reverse geocoding algorithms. We didn't look in detail at most of the parameters. For instance, the time parameter, which has quite an impact on results depending on the time of day. We could also look at more QGIS features, such as exporting maps in batch, but hopefully there'll be more of these tutorials in the future. Don't forget the documentation, which includes our reference documentation covering all the features of the plugin, as well as all the tutorials in written form. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.